just the application of industrial nitrogen actually has a converse effect on the plants because uh, it favours the uh, bad varieties of bacteria and actually more nitrogen ends up being released and is fixed in the soil. Um, Tammy mentions the word mechanical mind. What I do in, in one of the early chapters, after I've sort of surveyed the um, why Australian landscape is so different to Europe where agriculture came from, is I, I track the evolution of the human mind over time. And, and if you think about indigenous people and then even the early medieval period, um, people still saw themselves as part of Mother Earth, as in, an indivisible component. And then by the time we go through, and it, you know, some wonderful things happen, of course, in the uh, Enlightenment phase, scientific revolution, and then um, Adam Smith and John Locke sort of translating all that into modern economic thinking and the growth society, etc. The shift in the uh, human mind had gone from being an indivisible part of Mother Nature, seeing ourselves as indivisible, to seeing ourselves as separate and capable of manipulating it for human ends and profit. And so that's really the essence of the mechanical mind. And, um, and I guess what I'm proposing towards the end, thinking about this idea of self-organisation, is that a lot of these new farmers, not just farmers, urban, you know, we, we need to discuss the urban connection later, the new thinking there as well, where they're aware of allowing self-organisation, I'm, I'm calling it an interim phase of, of the emergent mind, because the properties that self-organising systems work with, those experiments are called emergent properties. And anyway, for want of a better word, that's, that's what I'm floating. It's a different mind. And um, what I've noticed in, in working with these, uh, I interviewed 80 odd regenerative farmers in the PhD, but a lot more since, is that um, they are thinking post-mechanical. Um, they're really earth empathic like the old organic mind. So the new mind is a combination of the old and the new, the best of science, et cetera, with the, the old empathy with Mother Earth. So it's sort of a new, a new form. And, um, and, and for many of them, it's a very empathic, spiritual sort of thing. And I'll just tell you one quick story, which is tangential, but Colin Sice, it, it, it twigged a memory. When Colin was burned in the bushfire, he, he had a... Um, a really top kelpie sheepdog stud, as well as a merino sheep stud. And, and he, he remembers seeing the smoke and the flames on the hill coming over and he raced out and opened all the cages for his stud kelpies. And he had one particular um, sire, an old dog, if anyone knows, black and tan kelpies with a big strong head and a wonderful dog. And, and he just said, you know, good luck, mate, along with the other dogs. And then he finds himself in hospital 20 k's away. And this dog had never, ever been off the farm. And um, only been a sire for his stud. Anyway, after three days in hospital, a sister comes around and she said, you know, when they brought you in, we cut all your burnt clothes off and they're still lying at the laundry. The last two days, there's this kelpie lying on your clothes. <laughs> and, um, you know, that, that empathy between animals and humans, it's, it's, it's that other dimension. But uh, I don't think, that's not in the book, but it's, uh, it's a very moving story. <laughs> Um, I was wondering about with the emergent mind, I was wondering uh, why not use Wendell Berry's term agrarian because of course um, agrarian is, is meant to be far more than being a farmer. It's about anybody really and their connection to land and cultivating land and feeding people but it's, it's, about, it's really a politicised and spiritual um, state of being that is related to land and that's, that's my understanding of agrarian. And so for me, it felt like the agrarian mind is what we're talking about.